Hi, everyone. It's Joe Chadburn with the International Peace Network. Uh, we're back. Uh, Nene Mon Thank you. And myself, uh, we got caught off. We had 80 mile an hour winds here in Indiana. It was crazy. My wife was trying to warn me, and I was sitting here just oblivious to it, and the lights were getting dark, and Nene had issues on her end. But uh, for those of you who have watched, we've done two videos so far, and you're interested in how can I get involved with the Palestinian cause to help these people and to bring about true peace in the Holy Land. If you'd like to know and you want to get involved, Nini, uh, tell our friends what they can do. Thank you, Joe. Thanks for having me back to say this very important part of our interview. Um, just to summarize what we said earlier, first thing, don't be afraid to speak out. Um, a common thing of the Zionist uh, movement is to scare people out of seeking information or speaking up um, with claims of anti-Semitism if you choose to do that, even if you are Jewish. Um, so don't be afraid to learn to speak up. Number one, every voice counts. Um, in fact, we need more of our Jewish brothers and sisters who have been so brave to speak up lately to continue speaking up. It's helping us so much and evidence of how speaking up in um, our small social circles or our local governments or in our positions of power are proven through, for example, the Me Mexico recognizing the state of Palestine recently and giving us an embassy, Barcelona stopping aiding Israel, different major cities and countries um, because of increased pressure from their citizens are starting to take action. So it's very important if you feel like it's hopeless that all you're doing is using your voice, even online. It's not. Every little bit helps. Um, second, support Palestinian existence. Our resistance is our existence. So enjoy a meal at one of our restaurants. Come to a fa Palestinian function. Learn about the culture for yourself. And just supporting us helps so much because our businesses are targeted, specifically people like myself. My sport is targeted. My business is targeted. The more noise that I create, the more that the Zionists are going to attack uh, my means of income, my ability to get sponsorships, all of that. So buy Palestinian products, boycott Israeli products. And I can't stress that um, final thought there of boycotting BDS, why that's so important um, enough. It seems like they only speak in two languages, actually. I was wrong earlier. I said that Zionists and Israel only speak in the language of bullets. No, they speak in money as well. So if we hit them where it hurts financially, it is proven to be effective. Um, we've seen over the years what's happened with Ben and Jerry's, for example, different companies and one i mentioned earlier puma who is complicit in apartheid and israeli crimes we need to stop buying their products the more pressure that the corporations put on israel the more action we will see because our world leaders aren't doing it the u.s isn't sanctioning them they're not holding them accountable but we can hit them where it hurts economically there is an awesome app called bycott B-U-Y-C-O-T-T, -T, and that helps you learn what exactly you're purchasing and, and if it funds Israeli apartheid or not. You, people would be surprised to see how many products that they purchase on a daily basis that directly fund these war crimes. And actually, some might argue in a more effective way than just aid from a government every day, because it, it's just on top of that. And um, yeah, it's very important that we educate ourselves as consumers where our products are coming from. And this coincides with a lot of what Americans believe, right? Keep it in America, make America great. Whether you're on the left or the right, we wanna help American businesses. So stop supporting Israeli businesses. Why don't you support your Palestinian American neighbor who has a business um, who is benefiting um, their clients or the general public and not spending on war crimes. So these are just simple ways you can help, of course, attending protests, not saying you have to lead them, 
if you're scared to attend them, just know they are nonviolent. We have children there all the time. And you might be surprised when you go just how much you're able to learn. So I do encourage people to get to the front lines with us in March and be loud and proud. But I hope that if there are people who don't feel like that's really their mode of action, at least uh, encourage them to have the, sh the courage to just attend from an outside view and, and observe what's going on for themselves. They happen all the time here in Chicago. Um, and yeah, just to get involved in any of the local opportunities that our governments have that we are unaware of until we actually look um, that pertain to this subject. And I mentioned it before, I'll briefly mention it again. For example, here in Illinois, we can directly um, communicate and, and uh, deal with the IIPB, the Illinois Investment Policy Board, which is an example of one group here in Illinois that's combating anti-Zionism and BDS, which we know um, are legitimate causes for the overall Palestinian cause. It is not anti-Semitic to be anti-Zionist, and BDS is just a boycott, divest, sanction movement um, that's basically doing the U.S. government's job for them since they're not holding Israel accountable. You as a consumer have the choice and the right to purchase products from where you feel is aligned with your morals. So these are little ways that people can help. Um, and of course, continue to watch Joe on the International Peace Network and follow me um, and other Americans who are outspoken on everything that's happening in Palestine and who can supply you with some real facts and credible sources to mm -hmm. back it up. So wonderful. I think that's, that's wonderful. good and for now. <laughs> While you were talking, okay. Oh, this, this I'm sorry. Week? And donate, uh, please donate. PCRF, United in Humanity, running refugees. I'm wearing their shirt right now. I've seen these people raise a few thousand dollars through my skating and directly use it to build homes in Gaza. So I only work with charities um, that we know for sure are doing great things on the ground and in Palestine, specifically with children and the underprivileged. And I encourage people, if they have anything to share, especially during this holy time, I don't know if you knew that, Joe, it's a very holy time for Muslims right now. Mm -hmm. This is Jor Hij, and it's um, the 10 days before Eid that uh, in Islam, they just consider to be some of the most critical days that you can fast and pray. And so it's a big time for Muslims around the world right now to donate. Mm -hmm. And I encourage any Muslims watching, if they have any charity to give, $1, $100, whatever it is, please think of United in Humanity, Running Refugees, and of course, PCRF. Sure. I'm going to, I'm going to, why not? I'm Joe, bring up a little hot button issue here. Oh, man. When, when you're talking <laughs> about boycotting, okay? We all, we all have views and a lot of us very strong condition, convictions on gender, sexuality, that type thing. But if you're not going to drink Bud Light because a guy dresses like a woman, okay, he's dressing like a woman versus not boycotting Israel because they are killing women, Thank oppressing you. women, stealing Thank women's you. houses, um, abusing women in every manner imaginable, pretty much. Um, I I'm going to question at least your Christianity. I'm going to question your humanity. I'm going to question your reasoning, regardless of where you stand on that issue. I have my strong convictions. I'm not bringing them up right here. What I'm bringing up is something that is of utmost importance, even more important. We are talking about human life. We are talking about people dying, okay? People being oppressed each and every day and being oppressed even as we speak. So you see how many millions and millions of dollars uh, Budweiser lost on Bud Light and how they have tanked so badly. Uh, dudes don't want to be seen with a Bud Light. They're not going to be seen with one at the bar or walking out of the uh, the package store with it. Uh, they're, they're not. They they don't want to be seen with it. Okay, and um, you know that's something. If if that bothers you so much, but murder and all these other atrocities, absolute atrocities, uh, you know, bulldozing women's homes while they're crying in the streets and then being mocked. Um, 
just grandmothers. I mean, there, there are so many horrible things that are happening to Palestinian women. So if you really believe in women's rights, um, stand with Palestine, support the BDS movement. And we've seen, we have seen what happens when, when enough people boycott in the United States, what happens financially and uh, how businesses kind of, yeah, they, they adjust. Oh, and we know it's effective because they're trying to increase legislation in this country to stop you from saying BDS. That's why people need to get involved if they live in Illinois and attend these IIPB meetings, because that's what they're doing is directly delivering consequences to Palestinian mm -hmm. businesses or other American, legitimate American businesses, because they use the word BDS or choice, chose to boycott Israel. And I ask the left, why is it okay to boycott Russia, but not Israel? Why is it okay to boycott certain clothing companies because they use sweatshops, but not Lipton and Nestle and different Israeli companies that are operating on stolen Palestinian land? Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, I think you brought up a great point for the right to connect to with the Bud Light issue. And I'm bringing one up for the left, and I hope people can just see that it, it is effective. It's not hopeless. They wouldn't be creating legislation about it. They wouldn't be taking such drastic measures. Like you said, this is the hot button issue. Yeah. There's something about BDS that is like, I've been coached through my entire adulthood by different organizations not to use it. There's many organizations that won't let me contribute my writing or censor me in their groups because I use the word terrorist or BDS or Zionists. Yeah. I've reached a point where I, I refuse to listen to that anymore. We need yeah. to be um, confident in our rights as Americans and having freedom of speech and that we are not saying anything anti-Semitic. We are reporting facts yeah. and we need to stay strong in that. And I believe mm -hmm. that, that if we do that in unity, we will reach some new yeah. goals. Yes. So. And we, we talk about, you know, election interference. No country uh, interferes with another country's elections more than Israel interferes yeah. with the United States. And that's APAC, KUFI, Christians United for Israel, which is mm -hmm. really, I mean, it's an oxymoron. But all of this foreign influence is not good. It is not right. If it came from any other country, people would be screaming bloody murder. So even if, like me, if your Congress people don't even listen to you, keep signing the petitions, send it to them, let your voice be heard, call. Um, now, I understand that they're, they're you know, yes, and, you And you pray, could do that too. But mm -hmm. apply, apply whatever pressure necessary because these people want to remain in office. And if there is enough grassroots uh, people who, who stand up for what is right, um, then, then that's what's, that's what's needed. Okay. Then maybe we can make, we can make a difference in that arena. So that's, so that's important. And you don't have to agree with everybody's politics. There are Palestinian politicians and pro-Palestinian people and groups. There's, there's some of their things that I don't agree with. Um, but I agree on Palestine. I may not agree with their other views, but I can agree with them on this issue. So let's not be so I'm left or right or Democrat, Republican. Take the issue. This is a humanitarian a issue. This issues is a humanitarian a issue. Yes. Not a left or right. Not a Muslim or Christian. Yes. Yes. And the thing is, though, these the Israeli support usually, to my understanding, gets just swept under the rug it, just behind the scenes. They just get a rubber stamp every single year. And I think it's right around Christmas time, too. I mean, it's right around the end of the year when everybody's Hanukkah. focused on other things. Yeah. <laughs> and it just it just gets swept on the rug. And all this money just goes to them. And so that's why I'm for single line items. So where you can stand for one thing without everything else being added to it. And they do that. I'm not trying to get on a tangent. But then one side will be like, oh, they're against helping people in nursing homes, you know. Well, you attached it to a bill that's, you know, <laughs> that's persecuting right. people. You know, you you did it. To, you, you're attaching your own stuff. And there's so much in this nasty salad. OK, um, that, that, that you, you don't if there's rabbit turds in the salad, even if there's one, I don't want to eat the salad. And I want to know what's in it. But too often we don't know what's in it. There's so much in these bills and uh, it's it's out of control and there's too much foreign yep. influence there's way yep. too much foreign influence and money talks it's, it's it's foreign influence it's politicians 
being being paid off, campaign financing and everything else. So again, you know, pray, but get involved, get involved. And I was just going to add on to what people can expect to see where they can get more involved. If you are watching and you're in the UK, you may know about PAL Action. And it is a group of very brave young people who have directly stopped and shut down arms factories by Elbit in the UK just by blocking the gates, scaling the roof. I'm not encouraging people to do things like that necessarily specifically, but I'm just saying check them out and keep your eyes and ears open for where that's going to start happening in the U.S. They've already in Italy stopped ships at the port that were delivering or that were bringing in materials so that they could produce Israeli armed goods. And they stopped outgoing ships with Italian weaponry. People are, people are willing to take action if they just know. And even if you don't want to be one of those people that's directly scaling the building or spray painting it, there are like whole towns, for example, in the UK that once they found out an arms factory was being built, they protested it. They stood against it together. And guess what? It wasn't constructed. So this is what we can anticipate to see if they continue to escalate these settlements. There's going to be an increase of people around the world that are going to directly stop these arms factories if the government isn't going to. Um, so I've given a few examples of small ways you can get involved and large ways you can get involved. And um I just want to say that when you talked about the leadership, I'm with you, Joe. Like, I don't um, like leadership that's happening anywhere. Uh, just to touch on your congressman point, yes, call your congressman, be vocal about that. But I know some people are like me. They feel like that's kind of hopeless. I still do it because it's necessary. Same but here. what else can you do besides that? There are actual meetings with your local leaders that you can attend. Maybe it's not in front of Biden and our secretary of defense, but you can still get to like state level things and voice your, the more emails and calls that they get, the more they're forced to answer. But I'm also upset with Palestinian leadership. We have an issue. I'm aware. I could talk about that for hours. However, I am so sick of the mainstream media saying that and it's coming from israel statement saying that there cannot be peace without leadership this is false mm -hmm. okay you don't need a leader to stop building settlements and bombing homes and attacking women and children mm -hmm. it's just human morality you don't do it whether there's three people fighting for leadership I bet you we would figure it out if you stopped demolishing our homes, bombing us left and right, cutting off our water and electricity supply, putting us in jail, you know, there's a, for just speaking out, for being press, shooting at our press, shooting at our athletes. Like we would figure it out. We would come up with a leader for you. But as long as all this chaos is happening, of course, we're going to be struggling internally to label someone as a leader because we're all upset with each other that someone should be doing more. And really, that's what the enemy wants for us to be divided and to fight each other. So we can't let the mainstream media lead with that narrative. No, peace is on Israel's hands. They have the ability to achieve it if they want. They can put down their guns. They can stop building the settlements. They can listen to the growing number of People around the world who are boycotting Israeli goods, calling into their governments, joining our protests, shutting down their armed arm factories and try to actually speak with what we consider our leadership. But they're not trying to do that. So they're never going to get one leader as long as they're attacking us from every angle. And that goes back to my um, analogy of narcissism that I said earlier, like it's all a big bubble of narcissism. What do you mean you're going to blame it on how we don't have a leader? So that's why we can't achieve peace. No, you can stop attacking an innocent population. And then maybe a leader will emerge out of that. But every time we do have a leader, I'd argue they're assassinated by the Israeli government <laughs> or the potential for a leader. So 
Um, yeah. Well, I and, hope... and when you've divided the Palestinian population like they have, and they can't even visit each other, they can't. Right. Even, you know, I mean, how are you? How are you going to really have a? a you a can't have truly meetings. united front if if you have divided Palestinians from Palestinians geographically in a, in an open air prison. Uh, then this is yeah, this is and and a walled off uh, yeah. West Bank, how are you going to do that? You, you know, that's, right. that's, that's something that's, so, that's absolutely crazy. All the re resistance groups we see forming now, again, I'd like to end on the note of making sure that the public watching knows they are not terrorists, are children who have been born into this and seen no change. And they've had enough. They don't know why no one is coming to defend them. They don't know why Hamas are the only people firing back at Israel when they're enclaved in Gaza and, and pretty powerless. Um, they are, and some would like to argue that they have a lot of power. I will say that they are increasing in power. Um, so they're powerless in comparison to the most advanced military, one of the most advanced militaries in the world, but they are increasing in power. And there's definitely resistance groups increasing now in the West Bank. And the world should not be surprised if your child was born into violence, into seeing their parents get killed. If you're an orphan, you have nothing left to live for. Your siblings have been killed. And now you have an opportunity to defend the rest of your town. You're probably going to sign up to do it. Because in an age of social media, these kids go online and they see me and and my little cousins and children here that I post live that are Palestinian living beautiful lives, wondering why if people care about Palestinians here, they don't care about them there and why no one is doing anything, why the government is saying something but not doing anything and then watching what's happening in Ukraine and okay, so Israel sends things there and the US sends things there, but they don't care about us. Mm -hmm. what, what do we expect? Like these yes. resistance groups are only going to increase and they're going to grow. And, and uh, I can promise them one thing. They, they want to keep increasing these in settlements. They better stay away from the Aqsa because if they don't, I can promise them there will not be peace. The Palestinian people will fight with everything in them. It will be unified. You might even have other Arabs come in because now like you're touching one of the most holiest places on earth. We've already seen when they raided Al-Aqsa before, the violence that's happened after, and that seems to be the direction they're heading, which is why these resistance groups are forming. They knew they were going to attack the West Bank in a way that they haven't in the last 20 years, and they're not about to wait for them to take Al-Aqsa. They're actually, what the settlers are doing, and the Israeli government, since they can't capture Al-Aqsa yet, they're destroying the towns around it because it's basically under Al-Aqsa. So they're hoping that the mosque in the area surrounding just kind of like concaves in, which is already doing. And then they're going to have an excuse to step in and, and clean it up. So that's really why they're going after, you know, start with Sheikh Jarrah and then Silwan, all the towns around um, Al-Aqsa. And the Palestinian youth are not going to wait around for that. Like, yeah. they're just over it. So, and, and again, for context, because somebody may be watching this video and didn't see our previous videos, mm -hmm. I'm going to say I'm going to say this. If 75 years ago, someone, the United States helped a certain people group that was oppressed, horribly oppressed, and they helped them, Christians, Muslims, Jews, all helped them, welcomed them with open arms. And these people were dwelling in uh, in unity and peace. And then this same group of people became militarized with the help and the continuous perpetual funding of outside influences from other countries. And this was happening in the United States. And they were and they ethnically cleanse much of Oklahoma, California, Nevada, Connecticut, wherever it is that you live. Imagine that area being ethnically cleansed in this group that you were kind to and, and had come into your land and, and was, was just, just very loving and caring to them. Imagine if they turned on you, ethnically cleansed the area, stole your houses, murdered your relatives, sent many to be refugees, uh, how you would feel. Most, most Americans 
would consider themselves if they were reclaiming that land or defending their land from these invaders that continued to take more and more land. They would consider themselves to be patriots and freedom fighters and people who were ex exercising their Second Amendment rights. So if you would do that to protect, okay, your own family to get your house back or your grandmother's house back or to protect your grandmother in her home, her from being murdered, her home from being stolen. If you would do that and you wouldn't consider yourself a terrorist, you would consider the people who were militarized that you were once extremely kind to that turned on you. You would consider them to be the terrorists. You would consider yourself to be a freedom fighter. Don't have a double standard with the Palestinians because that, so much of what I just said uh, characterizes the situation that, uh, that, that, that has happened and is happening right now in Palestine. So they are not terrorists. They are, they are not nope. terrorists whatsoever. Uh, by the American Second Amendment um, conservative definition, at least. Right. And we should throw in there the example of what if you were also defending the Vatican or some religious site that's important to Christians around the world that this group of people was so passionate about defending and you were supporting them. And then that's what's happening. We are the only Muslims defending Al-Aqsa. We are the only Christians defending the, the Holy Church of Sepulchre. And did I say that correctly? Sorry. <laughs> and the other key Christian sites in Jerusalem. No one else is coming to their defense. Like, mm -hmm. people should want to help these people if they identify as Muslim or Christian, because it is our duty to God to protect these yeah. holy places. And the Palestinians are the only ones doing it. These mm -hmm. settlers that identify as Jews, they're really just Zionists are destroying them and they're not going to live in peace with christians in palestine i can promise you that just like they're not living in peace with muslims there so yeah i hope um everyone learned something from this and at least tries to have more conversations mm -hmm. i hope we can do more than that though and actually take some action even if it's in little ways every day and I hope people continue to stay tuned because we will be sharing more as unfortunately, I know this isn't going to stop and there's going to be more to cover. And it's important um, now that we have the abilities that we do with social media with limited abilities, right? Because we are still censored. Um, but we have to at least try to get ahead of some of these narratives that I know the Israeli PR machine is going to be churning out and it's important that we stay consistent in our messaging and i believe that this is more than just a physical war this is an mm -hmm. online war uh this is an economical war and i pride myself on having the ability to contribute in some part to the economical and the online side and hopefully eventually the physical side as a result because of my efforts through PR. Mm -hmm. And it's very important. They have a unified um, just campaign. It's literally a, a PR campaign to delegitimize anything that Palestine is and are. So I've started my own. It's called Brand Palestine. And every little bit that people do, whether it's listening to this podcast, talking about some of the points we've talked about, like I said, getting directly involved helps because we have to compete with that. We haven't the last 70 whatever years. Mm -hmm. No one has started something like that. We do have a lot of people speaking up and a lot of great voices, but we have to make sure that we operate like the Israeli PR machine, which is consistent messaging, no fear in saying things that need to be said. We're not afraid of being labeled anti-Semitic anymore. Everyone knows that's bullshit. Excuse, excuse my French, sorry. Um, and to just make sure we're all focused on the same um, strategy. So for example, there are a million products we could be boycotting right now. I know Puma is the number one that people are, are focused on. And that will develop as we see, you know, if we're able to reach any uh, 
success with our protests of Puma or what other companies emerge. So I encourage everyone to stay tuned, like I said, to Betselam, this network, other good resources of what's happening in Palestine so that we can continue to work together in the most pressing of issues and, and in a more organized fashion. It seems like we're kind of getting there when people see things on social media, they kind of jump on and we speak in one voice and we use the same hashtags and we pressure the same um, leaders and companies, but we definitely need to keep doing a better job of it. And I, and I hope mm -hmm. that I can help with that specifically. Well, that's wonderful. I think you're a, a one of many wonderful spokeswomen and spokespeople. So just so thankful Thank you, for Jill. you. And if you thanks for not so... calling me a spokesman. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> no. I... <laughs> Remember the I'm, other day. I'm a lot of I'm a lot of things. Blind isn't one of them. You're definitely not a man. I'm just um, kidding. Um the um yeah, if you could uh provide, I know this would be like Facebook, YouTube, all of that, but some links as far as links to support, links to boycott. Um, so for the so, app yeah, for buy so, so that people can have yep. all of that and research things for themselves. I think that would uh, that would be wonderful too. I know of several, but I, I know will. that you you know them better than I do, and uh, and I think that would be that would be really. Hey, nice. I've learned a lot from you too. You you've shared some things. I'm like, oh, I never heard of these people, and they're great resource for information. Yeah, yeah. So we learn well, from each other. Thank I've got you. yeah. Believe it or not, I've been at Palestine conventions and I was sitting there with a, a young lady friend of mine from Gaza. And um, yeah, somebody approached me, thought that I was one of the main speakers. <laughs> so, I could see if, it. If I needed a microphone or what I need, thought I, thought I was an Arab too. People, 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 come, people come speak to me in Arabic. And I'm like, I'm sorry, I wish I spoke. But uh, yeah. You could so, pass for one. That's the other misconception. You said something earlier about like people going over there with blonde hair and blue eyes. And yeah, they're shooting other blonde haired Palestinian kids too. Mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm, so yeah. I hope people like really take their blinders off and realize that like, we have people of all shades, colors, religions, and that is what we're defending, not a mainstream media stereotype image of what Bin Laden's son might look like or something. Yeah. Like, yeah. no. Yeah. Is, yeah. Is, the Arab world is a big world. It's kind of like calling a Mexican someone from Spain or Puerto Rico mm -hmm. or Brazil, like, uh, you know, just because they're all in Latin America or speak Spanish or whatever – uh, reasoning you want to use to lump these people together. Mm -hmm. um, Palestine is its own country and we represent a very diverse group of people. So mm -hmm. I hope that and somewhere in there people can relate to it, whether it's through hearing from people like you or yeah. myself. Um, yeah, I think you're very special in these conversations because you are an American man, uh, Christian and former military, right? Uh, yeah, unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> um, hey, it, it's fortunate, though, because look at what that does for us here. Like, it's going to mm. get some people to listen who probably wouldn't listen to me um, mm. or someone else because I am getting a lot of military to actually start listening to me now. <laughs> but, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, it, it's 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 really nice, and, it, and it's needed. Um, so... Mm -hmm when people see all the different kinds of faces and personalities attached to the cause, mm -hmm. they're going to support it more. They're going to believe it to be a just cause and not something biased. So yeah. thank you too for all you do, Joe. When well, people are well, trying to put tape over my mouth, you let me just run it. <laughs> yeah, no tape. I don't, I don't own any tape. So no tape. No, you just, you just, you just talk. That's, that's fine. Sure. And, you know, I was thinking while you're talking, and this is for Christian listeners and viewers, but um, the Palestinians can trace their roots. I mean, Palestinian Christians can trace their roots back to being Jewish in the, in the days of Jesus. And some of the, the very earliest followers, Jewish followers of Jesus. So what do you do with that? You know, what do you do with that? They are Think about our that. cousins. We Think don't deny that. that. No, I mean, we this always, is... we always say the Jews can stay. The Zionists got to go. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. We've always lived with Jews and maybe not always in peace, but for a long time we were living in peace with them before the UK started infiltrating in the early 1900s. The Jews can stay. We love the Jews. It's the Zionists that have to go. And Mm -hmm. you do not have to be a Zionist to be a Jew. There are Mm -hmm. Jewish anti-Zionists. Yeah. And those are the Jews we've always gotten along with. They identified as Palestinians, by the way. There are Jewish yes. Palestinians. And the, they are the minority. But that's also why you can't have a minority group leading a majority of a population. Like, that's mm-hmm. crazy. Mm-hmm. We have Palestine as a country, Palestine leadership, and Jews who want to identify as Palestinians or whatever you want. But you can't identify as a Zionist and live here because... You want us to be erased. It is a mm-hmm. extremist terrorist group. So mm-hmm. just like they want to claim they don't want some people around. Well, that's how we feel. But our basis isn't off of race and religion. It's off of war crimes and violence mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. ungodly acts. So mm-hmm. yes. I hope that I can leave people with that. <laughs> and- yes. And you and I are never finished speaking. We just have to pause temporarily and then yes. uh, get get back again. So yeah, really appreciate you so much, sis. I can't, uh, yeah, I, words can't express that. And, and thank you for uh, Same here. sharing your heart. Thank you again. All right. Always bless you. <laughs> yes, God ma'am. bless you, Joe. You too, Nini. We'll talk again soon. Until next time. Yes, ma'am. Bye-bye. And free Palestine. Yes, free Palestine. I love you, Palestine. (laughs) Bye, Joe. Bye.